All right, last page, best page. Here we go. So, what is the measure of arc HJ? Well, arc HJ is this arc between H and J, and it's the minor arc because there's only there's only two letters. Okay, so we're looking for this arc here. Now, what can we see? Well, we can see that this is 80. That's 84. This angle here is 81. So what can we do with this? Well, understand that if we've got this angle 84, and if we add this arc out here, this 84, and let's just call this, I don't know, let's call that x. If we add 84 plus that x, okay, what we can then do is understand that this arc all the way from here to here is going to be the same as that angle inside of there. Okay, so if we take that, those two angles, divide it by two, okay, all of that's going to be equal to 81. So let's do a little bit of cross multiplication division. So 84 and x, divide that by two, so let's multiply both sides by two. So the twos cancel. So 84 plus x is equal to 81 times two, well that's just 162. Now we still got to solve for x here, so let's subtract 84 from both sides. Okay, so x is going to be equal to what? 162 minus 84. In this case, we're looking at 78 degrees. Okay, 78 degrees. All right, next one right here. So it says that assuming a soap bottle bubble is a perfect sphere. So we're going to talk about a sphere here, okay? What is the diameter? That's the question. What is the diameter of a bubble containing 1,200 cubic centimeters of air? This is a volume, okay? And we're going to answer it to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. All right, so for a sphere, we've got to go back to our formulas for a sphere. Now, the formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we need, we need the radius here. We need the radius. Move that out the way. So our volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now, it says, what's the diameter? Well, we know that if we have uh, the diameter is equal to twice the radius. So we have to figure out our radius here. So we have to work, kind of work our way there first, right? So realize we have our volume. We can substitute that 1,200 in. So 1,200 is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, our strategy here was going to evaluate the numbers first and then divide that on the other side. So let's just say 1,200 equals, and we have a 4 thirds pi. So 4 thirds pi, okay, so we're looking at approximately 4.18, and let's call that a 9, let's go three decimal places, 4.189 r cubed. So let's now get the r cubed term by itself, because we need that r to get to, the di to get to the diameter, divide both sides by that 4.189. So any number divided by itself is just a 1, so that simplifies out. So that's our r to the third power. Now we have 1,200 divided by that number. So 1,200 divided by 4.189, in which case we get 286.465, 286.465, 286.465. Now this is our r to the third power. We're not there yet, okay? We need the r, because once we get r, we'll be able to substitute that in here for our diameter. Now, how do we take a cube root of something? Now, this is something that we haven't worked on a lot here uh, in class, but what we're going to do here is we're going to use this little math button right here, okay? So if we hit this math button once, we can see that one of the functions down here, the fourth one, is the cube root of a number. This is what we're looking for. So we're going to arrow down, hit that enter button. So now it's the cube root, because a cube root undoes a cube. 
right? Cube root undoes a cube. So we're basically taking the cube root of both sides of our equation. So let's put that number underneath our radical. 286.465. And we're going to get approximately, looks like, 6.59 or 6.6, .6, because they told us the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So our radius, okay, this is our radius now. So that tells us that our radius is approximately 6.6, .6, okay, centimeters. But we haven't answered our question yet, because remember, we're trying to figure out our diameter. So we have to double that. So our diameter is 2 times that 6.6. .6. So if we multiply that by 2, we're going to get approximately 13.2. So our diameter is 13.2, and we're talking about centimeters. All right. One more. Last one, best one. Number 13. What is the volume of this cone? Oops, sorry, I forgot to put the box around that. Because my pen is dying. Okay. So let's do this in blue then. All right. What's our volume of a cone? Well, from our formula sheet, the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Okay, so our volume is one-third pi r squared h. So let's plug in what we know. Well, we can see that our radius is from the center to the edge, so that's the 5.1, that's our radius. Our height is the 7.2, that's our height. So all we have to do is plug that in, we'll be able to find our uh, volume. So our volume is one-third pi, our radius, was that 5.1 squared, and then we're going to multiply that by that 7.2 for the height. All right, so let's put this in our calculator here. So we've got one third, so let's cut it out, one divided by three, pi, we're going to take our radius and then square it, 5.1 squared, and then multiply that by our height, 7.2. So we're going to get approximately 196.11, or a 196.1, and we're talking about feet, so cubic feet. And that's our volume. All right, guys, so that wraps up our EOY uh, review. Uh, you want to take a look at the uh, answers that I'm going to post a little bit later on. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Other than that, let's have a great day tomorrow. Good luck.